Hello and welcome to Fearless DIY Music. My name is Tristan Lass and today I'd like to talk about how to make virtually any guitar play great. There's just some basic things that you can do to ensure that your instrument is in top form regardless of its price or its uh, vintage or you know how well it was built to begin with. Now, uh, there are going to be some caveats throughout the video. There are some things that will make a guitar unsalvageable. Well, maybe we should just start with that. Um, probably the greatest barrier to making a guitar eminently playable is if the neck is just beyond repair, i.e. the truss rod is maxed out and cannot be tightened anymore to get the proper relief, or conversely, if it's completely loose and the neck still can't hold the proper angle. If a guitar is in that condition, I mean, you could, you know, if it has a separate fingerboard, you can take the fingerboard off, you can reshape, smooth everything down, get it all dead flat, and then reinstall the truss rod or a better truss rod and get it to work. But in most cases, that is something you would only reserve for a really nice vintage guitar or a very high-end instrument that you want to rescue and maintain. So if the wood itself of the neck is no good or cannot be straight or is not straight and has no adjustability, that's a guitar that you really have to consider being, you know, like, okay, well, let's just be done with this. Um, or you have to go to extreme lengths to get it to work. Um, if there are just mechanical and structural problems that cannot be overcome, let's say, you know, I mean, you can, you can fill holes in guitars, you can move bridges around. There's a million different things that you can do to save almost any guitar, but sometimes it's just not worth it. Anyway, let's get to some of the basics. We were kind of talking about the neck. I think that the most important part of any guitar is the neck. It is our user interface. We have to like the way that it feels on our hand. Um, guitar strings from the nut to the saddle are a dead straight line. Thus it follows that the neck, the frets, and the neck itself should also be as straight and flat I mean, obviously there's a radius on the neck and there is a little bit of a uh, back bow on the neck or uh, forward, I mean, relief on the neck in order to make the guitar truly playable. But you get my point. Overall, everything needs to be flat and straight for the strings to interface with the frets in a meaningful way without buzz and without, you know, discomfort or having to have action that is uncomfortably high. So, well, why don't we just start at the start, the nut. Okay, if you've picked up a new guitar or a used guitar, or you have a guitar in your collection that you want to make perfectly playable, you want to make sure that your nut slots are properly spaced, number one. Number two, you want to make sure that they're not too high and they're not too, uh, not too uh, deep. So, the way to test that is you just put your thumb on the third fret and then press down and just make sure that that string is just a hair above that first fret. And then you know that you're in the ballpark for having a perfect nut slot. Moving on to the frets themselves. Um, if your frets are not level on the guitar, you're never going to make the thing play as well as it can. One of the very first things I do to any instrument that I get is I take a fret rocker and I check all the frets to see if I have any high spots or low spots. This is one of those areas where having the right tool is really important. Having a good quality fret rocker is prerequisite for being able to do fret work. You have to have one. Uh, most tools, in Luthery, you can get away with using stuff from the hardware store or from your, you know, just your general purpose toolbox. But when it comes to fret work and fret leveling, you cannot get away without having the proper tools. 
So to begin, you would do you take your fret rocker, go up and down the neck, see if there's any higher low spots. If I hit more than two or three frets that are off, I'm just like, I might as well level the whole thing. Leveling, there are two tool choices. These are once again, not things that you can skimp on or just, you know, pick up something and go, oh, this will work. You know, wrapping a piece of sandpaper around a two by four is not gonna work. Uh, you're going to need either a fret leveling bar or you will need a set of, or if you only need one, yeah, I think you can still buy them individually from Stu Mac, but what you need is a uh, wooden block uh, that's radiused and dead flat. Um, the, the radius blocks are fantastic. I've used the bar and the bar works fine, but I think that just for peace of mind and for somebody who's relatively inexperienced, using the blocks are incredibly easy. You just put, you know, adhesive sandpaper onto it. I use 400 grit when I'm leveling frets and you just attach the sandpaper, make sure that the uh, attachment side of the wood block is completely clean and free of debris because that will create bumps and, and create problems. When, once you have that set up, you just run it up and down the neck after marking the frets with a marker, permanent marker, and you go until you've got a nice little silver line on each of the frets to make sure that there are no high or low spots. Leveling is crucial if you want your guitar to play as well as it possibly can. After that, then of course, there's the you know crowning and polishing of the frets. I'm not gonna go into excruciating detail on that. This is just an overview of what makes a guitar play great. So let's pretend like your nut is right, that your fingerboard, your fretboard is perfect and all your frets are great. Next, you move to the saddle. And what I do for my saddle adjustments is, one, I get a reasonable string height so that it's got good action, i.e. the, you know, where the strings sit above the uh, fretboard. And then I go ahead and work on my intonation, which is moving these back and forth. Uh, on this guitar, it's mechanical. On most electric guitars, it's a mechanical exercise to move the bridge saddles back and forth or the bridge itself back and forth to get it to the proper intonation points. On an acoustic guitar, you're kind of stuck. Um, you have the bridge saddle and you can lower that by removing material. You can also use a compensated bridge or compensate the bridge yourself. That just means removing material on one side or the other of the saddle to move the string slightly forward or backward on its contact point. Acoustic guitars, Everything I'm talking about on this guitar applies to acoustic guitars as well. The nut, the fingerboard, the frets. You want to get the action as low as possible without buzzing on either an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, in my opinion, unless your personal preference is high action. Some people like that for slide. Some people just like that in general, especially, you know, sometimes finger pickers like a little bit higher action so they can really dig into the strings on an acoustic guitar. So, once you have this intonated and reasonably well set, what I do is I try at that point to get the string as low as possible before buzzing starts so that I can play an electric guitar acoustically. without having a bunch of rattling and buzzing all over the place. I'm not sure how well that picked up, but I try to have all my electrics set up so that I can pick them up off the wall without plugging in, and I can play anything that I want on them all the way up and down the neck without having buzzing, fretting out, or inordinate noise, but with as buttery and low an action as I can get. So once you have your bridge dialed in, you're pretty much there you should have excellent playability across the entire neck. If you can achieve that on any guitar that you own or any guitar that you happen to buy, you have one. And that guitar is a good guitar in my estimation. There's always the electronics to be changed out on an electric. There are the inherent um, tonal limitations of let's say an all laminate guitar versus a solid tone wood guitar. Of course, there will be quality differences. The point of this video is to say that with those 
basic steps taken care of, if you can make the guitar as playable as possible, it is a good guitar at that point. It may not sound exactly the way that you want it to, but if it's a comfortable playing experience, you're you're bound to play it a lot more than you would if it is just junk, if it is just set up and is a piece of garbage. I mean, I think that setup work is 80% of a guitar. Um, of course, there's, you know, like I said, the tone woods, the build quality, the hardware, but ultimately you can replace hardware. You can replace electronics. You can replace a lot of components on an acoustic guitar as well. Machine heads, the nut, the saddle, even the bridge. If the bridge is, is not, you know, doing, is not positioned correctly or not doing what it's supposed to do. I have done this on many, many, many of my guitars that are quote unquote low end or budget. And once I have them dialed and then gradually over time start, you know, upgrading components or finding the things that do work and don't work or that I don't like, then I can end up with an excellent instrument like this one. This is a 96 Yamaha Pacifica 112. This thing is the budget of the budget for that era. And it is a phenomenal instrument. I've recorded an entire album just using this guitar because at the time it was the only one I had that played perfectly. So I didn't have to mess with it and I had a comfortable playing experience and I bonded with it. Going through the process of doing these things to get your guitar to where it is eminently playable, sometimes will change your perspective of, you know, the instrument itself. If it plays great and feels great, then isn't it great? So the point of this entire video, like I said, is just almost any guitar can be made into a perfect player. Is it the perfect tone for you? Is it the perfect set of, uh, of you, know, you know, the way it looks? Is it the perfect, you know, uh, arrangement of controls on an electric? Is it the right size acoustic? Those are questions that all come down to personal preference. But if you can make it play and make it play really well, you have a great guitar. All right. Well, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'd like to see the subscriptions going up at this point. Um, the channel is doing very well, and I really appreciate everyone who watches these videos and stays until the end. All right, hit subscribe and take care. We'll see you next time.